Welcome to this M2 video on projection at any angle, part of projectiles. So what we're looking at here is effectively when we have an object that is projected at an angle, let's call it theta, and then it's going to make a nice path like so. We'll be looking at things like the greatest height. We were looking at the range or that horizontal displacement and kind of anything in between. So it's really now about looking at splitting this up into its, you know, horizontal and vertical components, looking at what happens under gravity, also looking at things like time of flight there. So, you know, the time it takes to get from point A to point B, for example, if I call those A and B, and everything in between. A couple of little key things just when we're looking at it. Vertical velocity here at the greatest height would be zero. And if we think of the horizontal velocity, so that would be, say, UX, horizontal velocity, is going to be equal to the final velocity horizontally. That's not going to change because we don't take into consideration any air resistance or anything like that in this, these cases. So with no forces acting on that horizontal velocity, that initial one, it will remain the same. The vertical velocity is obviously different as gravity is going to be impacting that velocity, that speed. Okay, hopefully it's uh, going to be quite straightforward. A few examples, a few questions at the end, um, and of course the, the solutions at the very end of the video. So without further ado, let's get uh, stuck in. Okay, first example. So we've got a particle P projected from a point O. So on a horizontal plane, it's moving at a speed of 40 meters per second angle of elevation 50 degrees elevation would be above the horizontal afterwards it moves freely under gravity which is kind of standard for all these questions and then it strikes at point a so although we probably don't need it in this one what i'd always suggest doing and in general on pretty much all mechanics questions is a quick little sketch so you can see here we're going up 40 meters per second, 50 degrees, and it's going from point O to point A. So this is what's happening. Now I need to split that 40 degree, sorry, that 40 meters per second up into its horizontal and vertical components. So I always start with the one for which we have the angle to. That's how I remember it, is always cos. Just find that very much easier to remember, no matter which direction we're going in. You look at the vector effectively you've got, and then when you're looking at the angle, the one that makes the angle, that's going to be cos, and the other one is your sine. So as I said, that's just how I use to remember it quickly when I'm doing these questions. Now, greatest height is going to be here. Let's call it H. And at that point, that's going to be the point where there's going to be no vertical speed, velocity anymore. Yeah, because at that point, that speed, that velocity is going to be zero, but in the vertical direction. So that's what we need to do. So we're going to resolve in the vertical direction. Now, I use the arrow here to denote which is the positive direction. And what I usually do is whichever direction the particle or whatever it is is moving initially, that's the general direction that I use as positive. It doesn't actually matter. 
if you pick whichever direction you pick as positive you need to just stick with it all the way through and it's only the signs that will change and you know the signs will just mean the direction in this so it's not an issue if you pick down as the positive but just pick one direction stick with it and i would recommend like i said using the initial direction of whatever you're modeling so we're looking at vertical direction of the vertical plane and the initial vertical velocity is 40 sine 50 so that vertical component if you it makes it easier use v and a, and u as a with a little y y for the vertical directions and x for the horizontal ones and it just might help you you know make sure you don't make any mistakes as you're going through the vertical velocity there will be zero at the highest point that distance so s y we i've called it h so i'm just going to stick h in there you can just leave it as a question mark it doesn't uh, matter and acceleration is going to be gravity but gravity is acting down which is opposite to a positive direction of up therefore it's a negative gravity so you've got u v s and a so it has to be v squared equals u squared plus 2 a s substituting everything in that we've got and then it will just be a matter of rearranging so we've got 2 times minus g times h so 2g h on the left and then I'm obviously gonna divide by g and 2 just to leave what h is and just pop this all in my calculator and this is 47.904 I like to do a few decimal places there before I round it off 47.9 meters to three significant figures so I always like to put a load of the decimals down and then round it off to an appropriate unit uh, sorry not unit appropriate measure three significant figures is is appropriate now next we need to look at total time of flight and for this we could use the same as what we've done find the time to this highest point and then double it because this is going to be symmetrical um, but that's not it doesn't always work with every problem so it's easier just to look at it as one whole motion so from O to A and if I think of that vertical height that's going to be zero so let's go ahead and look at that so we're going to be resolving again in the vertical direction sorry just making a bit of room there so we are resolve result there yeah. start again we're resolving in the vertical direction so we've got our u y is still 40 sine 50 but we don't know that final velocity so we won't be using v we know that a is going to be minus g gravity acting down at t time this is what we want to find so i'm just going to leave it with a question mark and then our vertical distance well the vertical distance we would have traveled is zero because we're at the same on the same plane aren't we horizontal so we've gone up and down so that displacement there is zero so we've got u a s and t so this is going to be s equals u t plus a half a t squared so that's zero and we got 40 sine 50 times t plus a half minus g t squared so to do this all we need to do is factorize out t so that gives me t 40 sine 50 minus a half g t and that makes sense because one of our values is going to be t equals zero and if this has traveled zero in the vertical direction this has got to be one of the points hasn't it so we can see that therefore 
t is going to be equal to zero or not t equals because I haven't put that out yet, but 40 sine 50 minus a half gt must be equal to zero. So all I need to do now is rearrange the second one here. So half gt and then in my calculator, so 40 sine 50 times 2 divided by 9.8 and that is 6.2 and so on so we're going to write 6.25 and leave it to three significant figures obviously this is the one we want the zero is not what we want for this question but it is obviously a valid answer for the you know the time now when we're working these answers out i would say make sure you store them in your calculator so like store as a or b or whatever um because it's important and you might need them in the later part of the question. So like this one, I've just stored there as A. You know, I could just pop that A by the answer just to remind me when I'm going through where I've stored it. So let's have a look at the final bit, part C. Now, part C is the distance OA, which means that I'm going to have to resolve horizontally. And resolving horizontally means I get u as 40 cos 50. Um, there's no acceleration as gravity acts perpendicular to it, so it doesn't affect it. Um, we know the time. The time we just worked out, so 6.25 seconds. And the distance, which is sx, that's OA, that's what we're trying to find. So we have these three things. It's just basically speed, distance, time formula. So sometimes you'll see this written as S equals VT. Okay, where that displacement is equal to velocity times time. Um, and often if I'm doing these, I might write it as UT. It's exactly the same thing. Obviously, normally um, V is for velocity and then in this we have u and v for initial and final velocity so you know it's just a set velocity in this horizontal direction so it doesn't really matter u and v would be exactly the same thing anyway s we're trying to find that's oa our velocity is 40 cos 50 and our time is 6.25, but remember you're using the full value. Now that gives me 160.7849 and it carries on. And then I'm going to round this one, let's do it to three significant figures. So 161 meters to three significant figures. So always good here, as I said previously, write down your full answer or you know a lot of your full answer first then do your rounding okay that way you can just make sure that you don't drop any any kind of accuracy marks and make sure you're using not the 6.25 like here you're using that full value that we worked out in part b now in this example we can see that the particle is projected from a point o we quite often use o o for the origin um, with a speed of 25 meters per second and an angle of elevation theta where tan theta equals four thirds. Find the length of time for which the particle is eight meters or more above O. So again, while it's not necessary, I would always recommend using a small diagram. Personally, for mechanics questions, I find that a diagram just helps you visualize what's going on in the problem especially then as you add to it maybe as the question might go on so we've got our diagram O this is going off at 25 meters per second at an angle of theta and just remember theta or tan theta is four thirds so I personally just tend to do a little triangle. Tan is opposite over adjacent, so opposite over adjacent. 
this means that then we can find out our missing length this is just Pythagoras 3 squared plus 4 squared square rooted and this will be 5 should be a recognizable triangle there Py Pythagorean triplet so from this now obviously tan theta was 4 thirds but you can see that sine theta is going to be opposite over adjacent and cos sorry opposite over hypotenuse and cos theta will be adjacent over hypotenuse so that means now we've got our values for sine theta and cos theta so we don't need actual value of theta you could find theta and substitute them in um, but you don't need to now we're looking for the length of time in which the particle was eight meters or more above O. So we're thinking, right, there's this line here that is basically going to be eight meters high. And we want to find these two points. So I'm just going to call A and B. And we need to find the length of time between these two. So this means we need to resolve vertically. So I'm going to take up as my uh, positive direction. And again, you know, if I think of my two components for the speed, my horizontal component is going to be 25 uh, cos theta. And since we know, you know, cos theta is 3 fifths, this will be 25 times 3 fifths which is 15. Then vertically we'd have 25 sine theta and as we know sine theta is 4 fifths so 25 times 4 fifths will be 20. So those are the values for our horizontal and vertical components of this speed. So looking for u, this is u in the y direction and it's going to be 20. Now A is going to be our acceleration due to gravity minus G as it's acting down. T we obviously want to find and S is also in the y direction and that's going to be 8. Now putting this in should enable us to find the time here at A and the time at B. So looking at what we've got, it's got to be s equals ut plus a half a t squared. So that's 8 equals to 20 t minus, now minus obviously because the a is minus g, so we've got a half g t squared. And all I've got here is a, well, a quadrilateral. So quadrilateral well, I don't know what I'm talking about in this video it's a quadratic so just need to make this equal to zero and solve so we get 4.9 t squared minus 20 t plus 8 equals zero and this will give me two values so t equals 3.63 which I'll store as A and T equals 0. Point. Now this is 4495. So let's write it as 0. 0.450. So we've got them both there to three significant figures. Now to finish off, all I need to do is subtract them from each other. So time above. 8 meters is going to be my 3.63 minus 0 0.450. Obviously I'm using the full values in the calculator for this and this gives me 3.18262 so on which is 3.18 seconds to three significant figures. And that's all there is to this problem not too difficult 
depending on the question how many marks you know i would consider perhaps at this point maybe doing a little bit more but you know you shouldn't need to you should be able to just use your card collector for these two answers here here's our third and final example a stone thrown with a speed of 20 meters per second from a balcony 45 meters above the ground the stone hits the ground five seconds later find the angle of, uh, of projection and then the distance from the window so let's again start with a simple drawing something like this so we've got this at 45 meters above the ground i'm going to assume it's going to go up and down and i'm going to measure that as my angle and this is going to be 20 meters per second this for later on will be obviously our horizontal distance and our time is five now one thing we do need to be crash careful of in this type of question um i don't know the answer to this at the moment you know i have just kind of made this question up but <laughs> this angle theta we're assuming it's going to look like this there could be a case where you know this angle actually is below the horizontal and acts down and that's all going to be due to the size of the angle so there is something that we do need to be careful of on this type of question um but let's see how it plays out we can go from there so first thing i'm going to do is split up my speed so we've got 20 sine theta and 20 cos theta for the vertical and the horizontal and we're going to resolve vertically first of all okay so this is to enable me to find the hopefully find the value of theta so u of y will be 20 sine theta the distance so sy is going to be negative 45 as we're going to drop down 45 meters our time is going to be 5 meters and our acceleration is going to be minus g so obviously it looks like we have four values no unknowns but obviously the unknown here is the theta s u a and t so s equals u t plus a half a t squared so it's just a matter of putting all our values in substitute these in half g t squared and what i want to do here is just obviously get the sine theta on its own so first step is obviously to add this to the other side that's going to give me 77.5 and obviously 5 times 20 sine theta is 100 sine theta so that means sine theta will be 31 over 40 so theta is 50.8 degrees to three significant figures now do bear in mind what other angles would work here so easiest way to do it is to think of your cast obviously theta being here that's our 50.8 which means that also this would be a viable angle so 180 minus that is 129.2 now obviously that type of angle isn't going to work in this case because that is going to go backwards isn't it so for this type of case it shouldn't it should be obvious okay with what you come up with you should come up with a positive angle 
or a negative angle because I think you should always be using sine it's always going to be a vertical but I'm just trying to put it out there that you know just be careful of the angle just in case there is a problem that I haven't thought of that you know you do need to take into consideration uh, a different angle but yeah, that's all it is. It's this angle here. Obviously, the 129.2 would be this going in the other direction. So anyway, that is part A done. Let's look at part B. So for part B, we're going to have to resolve horizontally to get that horizontal distance. So obviously, that is what we are trying to find, Sx. Now, my U or V, doesn't really matter what you use on this one, remember. That's going to be 20 cos, and theta now is 50.8. But obviously, I'm going to use the full value that is in my calculator. I stored this particular value as A. I just tend to store over previous questions. So that is, you know, what I'm going to be using here and then time is obviously our five seconds that hasn't changed so s equals vt or s equals ut like i said before it doesn't really matter plug our values in and that's it so that gives me 63.1961 and so on so 63.2 meters and that's our horizontal distance there and it would be very easy to make the mistake of stopping there however if we read careful the question carefully we want the distance from the window to the point where the stone hits the ground so we want the distance from the window to the point where the stone hits the ground now if it said horizontal distance we would have been done but by the way the question is implying it wants that actual distance straight line distance from what i've called a and b so we're almost there really all we need to do now is just think of pythagoras so our horizontal distance is 63.2 of course using the full value there and our vertical here is 45 meters and I've just labeled this as AB so AB squared is our 45 squared plus 63.2 squared and then of course square rooted so before I square root that that does come in as 6018.75 so not actually too bad a number to write down and then square rooting this takes me to 77.6 meters and as expected obviously being a hypotenuse it is a the largest value there so just be careful with these questions okay if this had said horizontal distance we would have been done but just be careful in the wording of these questions okay so you don't stop a little bit prematurely Hope you found these three examples useful. Um, obviously, as always, there's going to be a few questions for you to try, and the answers will be at the end of the video. Let me know how you found it. Oh, and you know, if you are new here or you know you're a long time watcher but you haven't subscribed yet, please just consider hitting that subscribe button. Just uh, helps me out obviously helps other people out as well as the more people watching maybe other people will find this channel useful useful as well anyway cheers
thought I'd talk you through this part of this question as it's not as straightforward as you know a lot of the others so with this one it is a little bit more difficult but what we need to do first of all is we need to think about resolving horizontally this will give us a form of the time so if we think of our initial velocity and this is going to be 4 because it's the 4i then when we think of our distance our horizontal distance that's going to be you know the ki so it's just going to be k and then obviously we have absolutely no idea of time now, not knowing time and obviously having K as another unknown initially might not look super helpful, but what we want to do is we'll get an expression for time in forms of K, in terms of K, I should say, and then we should be able to substitute that into when we resolve vertically, and that should be able to give us then hopefully our K. You know, we'd have two unknowns and two equations equations so this is s equals vt so s is my k so that's four times t therefore t is k over four so that's obviously at this point at this point t is k over four so that's what we want to do we want to now resolve vertically so that would mean that our initial velocity would be 5 and our time here would be k over 4 our acceleration would be minus g and then our s our horizontal, sorry, vertical distance would be minus k because obviously k times minus j would be minus kj so it's done a distance of minus k from the origin and then all we need to do is substitute this into appropriate formula so that's s equals ut plus a half a t squared notice we do use this one quite a lot so we've got minus k equals five times k over four uh, minus sorry minus a half g times k over four squared so now we've got an equation in terms of just k as an unknown now so it's just a matter of rearranging and solving Now, finding the speed at B uh, at point P is not that you know not super straightforward either. Okay, so that's why I want to talk you through this one. Now, the horizontal velocity, well, that's quite easy because it's not affected by obviously gravity. It's going to remain four. So you know our u x. And our Vx is always going to be that 4 meters per second. So there's no difference there. The one that we need to work out is our vertical velocity. So all we actually need to do is resolve vertically. Um, where our initial velocity. Sorry, that should be in the y direction, isn't it? would be 5 our acceleration is minus g the distance we traveled we know is minus k which we've worked out over here obviously we'll use the the full value there and then we actually want to find our final velocity that's what we're looking for 
So we've got here V, U, A and S. So we need to use V squared equals U squared plus 2 A, S. And then from here it should be fairly straightforward. Okay, um, might have actually been better just put the plus in there, isn't it? With the, the minus G and the minus K, with the two signs basically cancelling each other out here. Um, don't forget that squared. So VY squared will be, and this gives me a nice value of 169. Now I can also obviously find VY, which just taking the square root would give me plus or minus 13. And in this case, that would be a negative 13 because the direction it's going in is down. So, you know, that should be quite obvious. But, you know, I need to basically use Pythagoras. So I'm going to need the square version of it. So we're going to look at our final speed of the object. So speed, or our, let's call it V, V squared is going to be our V, our horizontal one squared plus our vertical one squared. Because obviously we've basically got a right angle triangle. Yeah, so horizontal squared plus vertical squared and then square rooted. So V X squared, so that's four squared plus 169. I can just pop that straight in from here. See how I didn't need this particular value. So that's going to give me 185. So then, sorry, I'm running out of room here. V is going to be the square root of 185. So speed at P is 13.6 meters per second to three significant figures. Um, this type of question I would probably just finish with some sort of little short sentence saying what the speed is at that point. I'll just make a little bit of room and we'll go through the final part. Now part C wants the direction of motion which basically means we need to find the angle. The angle in which it is moving to. So for this type of thing, we would normally kind of usually compare it to the horizontal. So, you know, we're thinking, obviously, this is going in this kind of direction. Here's my horizontal. So I want this angle theta, or you can call it alpha, whatever you want. Okay, that's what we're trying to find. Now, if I go back to the triangle that I had, so... I've got my horizontal velocity, Vx. Now, I actually didn't draw a very good Vy because it should be pointing down, shouldn't it? We know that that velocity there is down. And then there's theta, and that would be my V. So from this point, you know, I can use any of these values I'd probably stick with the horizontal and the vertical ones in which case using tan as that's you know those ones were we, we worked those out earlier they don't rely on additional working out so tan is opposite over adjacent so the opposite would be 13 over 4. I know technically it's negative 13, but I just want the positive size of this angle. And then I can just talk about it being underneath the horizontal. So we get 72.9 degrees to three significant figures. So object passes through that point P 
at 72.9 degrees below the horizontal. Okay. 